Well, hello there, and you join us here today to answer the question that's puzzled minds for many, many years. Why can't car companies and watch brands make it work? If you're looking to buy a watch, not perhaps a car, a watch, you can buy one at watchfinder.com. Um, so Tom and I, our ongoing dispute has entered the road rage phase. We saw each other on the street and cut each other up. Much swearing was had. And I think that really needs to be brought back down again. So we have brought a guest. He is a watch fan. He is a car fan. He is Matt Farrow of The Smoking Tire. How are you doing today, Matt? Thank you for joining us. Hi, guys. Thank you for having me. Love. I love an opportunity to talk about watches. I don't get to do it enough <laughs> on my own program. We probably have the reverse problem. I want to talk about cars. You want to talk about watches. Right. Well, we can we can we can combine them into a, de a devastating car crash of terribleness that happens when you cross <laughs> cars and watches. <laughs> Absolutely. If you aren't familiar with Matt and the Smoking Tire and you like cars, well, you should be, and I'm surprised that you don't. Check out the links in the description below. All the good stuff there. I, I, I hate to break it to you now, Matt, but we're going to talk about cars for a little bit. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> cars and watch brands. Uh, Tom, as a massive petrol head yourself, um, <laughs> what is, from an outside perspective... What do you think is going on with the car manufacturers and the watch manufacturers? So what would your perspective be on it? Um, well, I, it sounds like a really fertile kind of market to me because I think there's quite a lot of correlation between watch fans and car fans. I think they, they seem to go together quite nicely. Petrol heads and movement heads, uh, it's the same thing. I think it's that same... It's a fascination with engines <laughs> and 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 metal. I don't know. I think there's. I don't know what the correlation is there, but but I would have, I would have thought, yeah, that's it's a good it's a good niche that fits right into both groups. Well, it's it's art it's art and science, right? You know, you've got you've got craftsmanship, you've got um, gears and 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 a, and a power source and a transmission and an output. And then you've got, um, you know, the artistry of, of the styling that is at the at the forefront of it. And you, you'd be right, Tom, in thinking that people who like cars like watches. But Matt, do you want to break it to Tom? Um, the general overview of the relationship between car brands and watch brands. Well, look, you can. Yes, it's true that people who like cars often like watches and vice versa there's it's not everybody but there's a there's a big overlap mm. and there's reasons for that right like i said art and science also you know a, a watch is sort of like a car that you can bring into the bar with you you know like it's <laughs> you know it's 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 easy you know, one might be inclined to have a collection of both, if possible, and watches are far easier to collect than cars. It's not that the relationship between cars and watches as a concept is a problem. It's when they hammer it on the nose from a branding perspective that it becomes very cringy and silly they they just go too far right i don't i don't want to see a car brand on the watch like i i don't want i don't need a car themed watch or a watch themed car there are ways to subtly imply the connection that are successful for instance um Mercedes and IWC do an okay job. The IWC Ingenieur, the face of that is the analog clock in Mercedes' highest end models, right? Bentley, um, on their Continental GT and the Flying Spur, when the, it has that rotating gauge cluster, on the back of it, the analog dials are, are clearly designed by Breitling. Um, but what I don't want is a Breitling watch that says Bentley on it. I don't want a Mercedes, an IWC that says Mercedes on it. I don't want a Richard Mille that says Ferrari on it, you know, and, and, and I don't want watches that are made of car parts. You know, I don't want watches that have like the Steve McQueen 
golf livery from Le Mans. Like it just, to me, it doesn't need, the connection between watches and cars is so obvious in a general conceptual way and everybody seems to know it that it becomes very, very easy to take it too far into a terrible place. And it just mm -hmm. isn't, it just doesn't, it's not necessary. It doesn't mean they don't sell them. I mean, they do sometimes, but like, you can usually tell if someone's wearing one of those watches, how that conversation with them is going to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kind of, my, my initial thought was it seems a little bit like a consolation prize, like, a Ferrari badge on anything other than a Ferrari right. seems a little bit sad, like a like wearing a Ferrari baseball cap around the place, you know? It's right. like, right. hey, check it out. Yeah, and so that's the, and, and that can happen, you know, independent of price. I mean, if you buy a very cheap watch that has a Ferrari dial on it or something, that's hokey. Yeah. It, it, it's hokey, but, you know, you could also buy a $2 million Jacob and co Bugatti that, you know, from an engineering perspective is very impressive, but is just deeply heinous looking and incredibly tacky at the same time. Um, it all, it undermines the engineering of it rather than accentuating the engineering of it. A Breitling for Bentley is a hideously tacky watch that is based on a watch that is not hideously tacky. It's been intentionally made tacky, you know, like a, a Navitimer or a Chronomat or whatever is not tacky um, and has a lot of credibility on its own. Breitling makes a fine watch, but but it's, it's the specific collaboration and implementation of automotive shit into the watch that is that is terrible. And I'll and I'll use here's I'll use a couple examples of where it's gone better. Okay, uh, my watch, the Notice guys, when we first started talking, they wanted to put automotive elements on the watch. And I was very much against that for all the reasons I just said. And they go, okay, but we really want, we want, I said, we can do something, but it has to be unidentifiable as that. And so, and I'm far away from the camera, but it, the winding crown, it's, it's very difficult to see, and I'm sorry. The winding crown has a tire tread like pattern on it that allows you to grip the crown and spin it. It's very subtle. And if you weren't into cars, you probably wouldn't notice it. Um, and the end of the winding crown has a little uh, brass insert in, in it, which is just a relationship because I happen to like gold wheels on a couple of my cars. That's it. It's a gold circle and it's a, it's a bit of a pattern on the grippiness. That's it. The most successful I've ever seen. Now, I want to talk about this. Uh, full disclosure, I'm a brand ambassador for this company. But b because I wanted to buy one, and they then wouldn't sell it to me. They said, we'd rather you were ambassador. This is a new watch. I just got it. This is called the Arcanaut Arc 2 Fordite. Do you guys know about this watch? I don't know about the Arcanaut, but I know about Fordite. So do you know who Black Badger is? Yes. Black Badger is a master of materials, science, loom. He does all the loom painting for MB and F. Mm -hmm. He does a bunch of crazy, crazy stuff. And he started his own watch company with a guy named Rob Nuds. And it's this company, Arcanaut. And they have this beautiful piece with this curved cushion case and this, I have, they send you a bunch of straps. So I've gone, I've gone half and half with the straps. And, um, <laughs> and the dial is made of Fordite. And Fordite is the material that is from the Ford car factory in, in Michigan. When they paint the cars in the paint booth, the drippings fall on the floor and accumulate in layers over time, many, many years. And when they demolish the factory, it used to be the Mustang factory and then became the F-150 factory later, they milled out the floors of the paint booths and they got blocks of this stuff that was hardened car paint. It's called Fordite. And so they have a bunch of blocks of it. And depending on how you cut it and what section of block you choose, you can get these incredible, totally unique patterns. 
and you can cut it vertically and get stripes, you can cut it horizontally and get sort of these amoeba-like things, or you can cut it on an angle and get these waves. And so this is a watch where it has nothing and everything to do with cars at the same time. And if you knew nothing about cars at all, you would look at it and go, what is that? That is amazing. And it's only when you explain the significance of the fact that this dial is made entirely of hardened car paint from Ford's that you go, oh, well, that's an extra layer of cool. And uh, I showed this watch. I met the CEO of Ford this past week at Pebble Beach, and he thought this was very cool. He said, how'd they get our paint? <laughs> <laughs> um, but so, so that is an example of a very successful collaboration between cars and watches because it adds a totally unique flavor to the watch while not turning off anybody that, that doesn't know about cars, doesn't care about cars. It doesn't say Ford on here anywhere. So, so that's that to me is an incredibly successful collab but but it's it's very very unique in the in the space uh to see something like that it sounds to me the way i see it it's the approach seems more marketing led than design led like the subtleties of the design choices that you're talking about there seem very considered as opposed to just like let's use the ferrari name and when people see ferrari on the watch they'll be that'll be interesting that seems like kind of a cynical approach when you when you think of it like that as opposed to something that's that you actually can see a visual connection that's actually very considered and quite thoughtful and artistic. I think that's absolutely right. Yeah, absolutely right. It seems to be my, most of the problem, yeah. Yeah, well, it's like, yeah, how you go, you know, how can a automotive abstract concept like swirled paint add to, add to the design of this watch in a way that you don't need to appreciate the car brand at all? to appreciate mm. this this material or this this element of design versus like you said how can we cynically add the car's branding to uh to the watch yeah i think i think that's absolutely correct and only maybe the only exception to that is when when JLC did the watch that could somehow unlock and start your your DBS. I think uh, that one, <laughs> I'll give them a pass. Like, all right, it's a collab watch, but the watch is like a key to the car. Like, okay, now we're, now, <laughs> now we're talking, you know? Yeah, functional. I think a good example of a uh, car and watch done well is the IWC Pilots uh, Petronas edition because they, they took the color and it's already associated with a very popular color and it's bright and it's appealing and that did incredibly well sure but and and and, but, and they didn't it was a color you know they didn't mm -hmm. they didn't really change it's not it's not like they they made at least as far as i know it's not like they made you know the the winding rotor you know lewis is like spinning head or something you know or something <laughs> you know it's in it's, I think with, with a lot of these, it's really, I think our discussion could, could be broken down into less is more, you know, less, less is more change, change one subtle thing that, that someone who doesn't even care about the car would still appreciate from an aesthetic standpoint. And then you'll probably have a successful collab versus change a whole bunch of things that actually look like stuff from the car and it ends up getting pretty hokey pretty quick yeah it's, it's lazy when when that's done and ferrari is a really good case study for this because they have churned through watch brands starting with gerard perigo which was simply a big panerai logo on a chronograph yeah. moving yeah. into panerai who did a subset brand specifically badged ferrari and the watches themselves probably weren't that that bad at all but having the big ferrari logo was but the one for me that really um took the cake was the hublot partnership um with the peak of that or perhaps the lowest point being the five hundred thousand dollar sapphire mp05 with the winding that was done with a small drill do you remember yeah, that? Yeah. It was like a, a Formula like One. Like starting drive. an F1 car. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah I, remember, I do remember that. 
That's it, the I mean, very extreme. Yeah. Yeah, and and Hublot, I think, you know, I know there's people that like Hublot, and I know their watches are objectively well made, but but Hublot very regularly ventures into cringe territory. So I color me <laughs> entirely shocked uh, that <laughs> that they would that they would make one of the most cringy watches uh, of all time. Yeah, um, yeah, that that one wasn't great. It's weird though because it's like. It's not really Ferrari's fault. It's like, it's not, it, it just looks like a monster, doesn't it? And maybe it's too far. It's like, what if we shrunk down the car and actually put it in a watch case? Like, <laughs> Well, that's the Jacob and Co. Bugatti, isn't it? It's like, what if we put the actual engine, you know, in the, in the case? You know, Ferrari, you know, they make great cars uh, most of the time. Um, but but they're a, they are a licensing company that that uses cars to market other stuff i mean they they make more money on t-shirts every year than they make on cars <laughs> um and so uh, i i you know one one has to wonder um how how much the top brass at ferrari were involved in this watch uh, how much it was just a licensing thing um and and it's not like ferrari's ever collabed on like a great watch like when when is that ever? I mean, even even that the 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 Richard Mille that's you know the, the thinnest watch in the world, um, technically unbelievable, but it's not like a good looking watch. I mean, you uh, objectively no. Piaget's ultra thin watches are much much prettier than than this Richard Mille thing where fifty percent of the face is just a horse. You know, like <laughs> you know, it's not that interesting, really, is it? No. It looks like a Ferrari executive business card, doesn't it? That watch, right. um, as you say, technically very <laughs> impressive. But what's what's actually interesting, um, and you mentioned this briefly about Richard Mille earlier, is that their approach, they sponsor McLaren, they sponsor the Haas F1 team, they sponsor Ferrari. Right. But more often yeah. than not, aside from the branding on the side of the car, they collaborate with the drivers to create a watch, and they have very much taken your advice on this. Create something that is inspired by the colours of the team, the colours yes. that mean something to the driver, their national colours, and nowhere do they have, except for the credit card fella, nowhere do they yeah. have a big brand car logo on it. And those seem to work, right? Well, it's it for all the reasons that we we said. You don't, you know, you you might like the, the Rafael Nadal Richard Mille and not give two shits about Rafael Nadal. You just like orange and black. I mean, you know, and, and uh, I don't. Not everybody I know. I mean, I, I can't believe I know more than one person who has a Bubba Watson watch. But neither of the two people I know who own Bubba Watson watches could care less about Bubba Watson the golfer. Um, but but it's um, they thought it was about bubble gum. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean when well, when you've got so when you've got an individual like a driver or an athlete, right? The individual doesn't have product to sell. They don't have a logo that needs to be a brand that needs to be furthered. You know that that watch collab is sort of a reward to the existing person's uh existence right rather than a way to sell more things with the logo on it and further that brand and so that's why collaborations with individuals are often so much more subtle and successful than with giant the extensions of of brands um Mm. And Richard Mille does that well. Yeah, much like your notice. Um, and I think we'll talk about, to wrap up the conversation, the elephant in the room, which is Rolex, who, whilst they're associated with Le Mans, F1, uh, the Daytona, have never done a car collaboration. Do you think they just want to avoid the whole mess altogether? Take note. <laughs> <laughs> well, part of it is they don't have to, right? You don't see... What you rarely see are collaborations from brands that have no merchandise to sell in their stores. You know what I mean? <laughs> you go into a Rolex store, yes. you're not walking out of there with a watch. They don't need it. They don't have, you know, um, what's the line from the movie Goodfellas? Uh, Paulie never moved very fast because he didn't have to. 
<laughs> you know, that's 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 what it is, right? Rolex, um, you know, not only do they, they make a great watch, I mean, they make a great watch. And, and there's a lot of reasons to be cynical about Rolex for the fact that their watches evolve very slowly and that a new color makes news for months and that they are kind of scammy with, you know, how their retailers allocate watches and like, okay, those are those are all valid, you know. Hi, this is Nikki. Hi, Nikki. <laughs> Can you slide over, sweetie? <laughs> but at the end of the day, they don't have to do any of that bullshit. They don't need it. Yeah. You know, they're they can they can sponsor individuals uh using their regular off the rack product. And those individuals are happy to wear it. You know, no one's nobody's ever been like, you know, I'm not gonna take a Rolex sponsorship unless they design a collab with me like someone you know i'm fr i'm friends uh humble brag you know i'm friends with jensen button formula one world champion yeah. rolex ambassador or testimony as it were you know yes. <laughs> and here's a dude who's done everything one could do continues to have one of the best lives of any and this dude is stoked to be paid to wear an off the rack rolex he doesn't need a, a jensen button edition you know, he's, he is, he is like, look at this free day Daytona that rules. Like, you know, like that's, <laughs> you know, so, so they don't do it cause they don't have to, you go into a, go yeah. into an IWC store, pick your watch, walk out of there right then, you know, go into a Hublot store, anything you want, buy it today. You know, but, you know, most, most brands go into their boutique. You're walking out of there with the watch you want, not Rolex. Everything is display yeah. only and you got to jump through some hoops or do some sexual favors or buy some really <laughs> ugly garbage for a Daytona to show up, you know? And so with that level of brand, they don't need to. Yeah. Their level of brand is so strong, isn't it? It's like, I think when some other brands, like when they, they want to combine those two IPs, you know, Breitling and Bentley is going to be better than when we're on our own but rolex is just like anything you add to that it's going to diminish the rolex brand <laughs> rolex no they see they, the funny thing is it would actually be true for breitling and bentley as well it's not like it's not like that truth only exists for rolex that truth exists for yeah. breitling and bentley they just haven't learned that somehow <laughs> absolutely and i think the, the closest rolex have come to anything even remotely close to that is the recent Paul Newman edition of the Daytona. And again, it's incredibly subtle and it's related to cars via a watch owned by a person who liked driving cars. Um, and that's probably as on the nose as they get. Sure, but it doesn't, it certainly doesn't say Paul Newman on it. It's certainly not marketed as a Paul Newman. It's marketed as a, as a throwback color, you mm. know, to a, you know, Paul Newman had a production watch at the time. So it's just a throwback to the, to, to what he was what he was wearing and and um you know it, it's uh it is funny that 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 um, that that watch um really led the you know the ascent of watches from 10 or 15 years ago to to where they're at uh today so there you go watch manufacturers and car manufacturers matt says no Behave yourselves. Uh, Div, you're a listener. Thank you so much for watching. Matt, thank you so much for joining us, uh, chatting about both cars and watches. My pleasure. And um, for you watching, please do go and click all the links in the description below. The Smoking Tire, absolutely worth a watch. It has cost me money in the past. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.